Yeah, hello. Hello, Glenn. Hi. How's it going? Uh, another day. T- uh, today, I guess t- today's day is um the day of my rebirth. I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Congratulations. My. <laughs> How many years have you been reborn? <laughs> to twenty-six. <laughs> twenty-six now. Yeah. Well, yeah. That adds up to eight. <laughs> so you've become a man. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, with this um, this whole uh, like with the Neanderthals, some uh, I was talking to a friend, and he said um, I forgot the the exact name of the the author, but he said it's another author who uh, published a book about Neanderthals. Do, do you know? Are you aware of anybody else that talks about Neanderthals? Well, I I suspect there are some scientific people uh-huh. uh, scientific world but the only information that I gather is is basically from encyclopedias mm. dictionaries did you find a lot of stuff about Neanderthals and Neanderthals and the encyclopedias yeah yeah mm. the um, the scientific papers are written by people whose salary is uh, paid by someone who has an interest in keeping the story going, whatever story they've got going mm-hmm. at the time. So I I kind of discount the um, uh, specific information published by the scientific community. In an encyclopedia, you're getting kind of a an overview mm-hmm. uh, with uh, basically people bringing in uh, half a dozen or a dozen different books that they've used to make up the the article, but uh, it it's it's broader, mm-hmm. easier to to grasp. Uh, they're they're not quite aware of exactly what they're hiding, whereas the scientific person would know. Right. Anybody in science would know automatically that uh, creation didn't happen, you know, in 4000 BC, right. and uh, they have the the general knowledge. Right. So uh, taking that. Adding it to my book of life and um, the knowledge that I have gained in this life, I look for a basic, uh, what would you call it, premise, common denominator that, that runs across everybody's stories and compare it to what my intuition gave me prior to my birth when it prepared my genome for this trip. You know what I think? I think that, um, like, the system, like, with the whole intuition and the gut feeling, I think they took that and spun it off into spirituality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Well, a lot of spirituality, there's a part about heaven, hell, Mm -hmm. um, burning forever in a fire. All of that is just based on the geology of the planet. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> and all the mysteries and they also about like the underworld and yeah. but, um, the spiritual thing is basically telling you up front, uh, like any spirit, you're on L S D. You're you're hallucinating. And uh, so they tell, they tell you up front, except most people don't grasp that, that concept, that uh, anything that's spiritual is is no different than being on rye or scotch or gin or <laughs> beer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're hallucinating. And, of course, the, the biggest hallucination is LSD, and... and uh, 
that's why the Mormons use uh, the term Latter Day Saints. Yeah, I, LDS. I had a talk with uh, somebody called me. This person called me. Actually, I called them. Uh, they emailed me, and um, he wanted me to like. I guess he was asking, I guess, to help me to like him write this science fiction book. And we were talking, and he's, I think he's, like, had an overview, not a, of all your work, but he heard, like, an interview on the internet. And, um, I don't know, the conversation kept going to, uh, other dimensions and consciousness, and I'm just like, <laughs> I think that's part of that, uh, New Age, uh. Yeah, yeah. Cause that stuff is really isn't new. It's just all like all the old, like shamanistic, all these old yeah. things. She man. She man. Yeah, exactly. I was just thinking. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. she man. I mean, the story is the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they interpret it differently mm-hmm. uh, with each each group who gets assigned the task of confusing the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and and of course the she men <laughs> the native community were given that task first because mm. they were marooned a long time ago. Yeah, because I see that like um yeah with the she men like are, are they are they the same ones who were marooned and like. I guess like the Aztecs and the Mayans and yeah, you you have uh, basically groups of Asians who've been programmed in the religions of the East. Yeah, those are all the red red Asians. And then they get thrown on a boat, you know, mm. forty at a time or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and and dropped off in different places around the world. So that's that's why there's a basic story that remains the same. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Um, among all of what they call native people. Because they basically come from the same place, which is at first Asia, the Far East, and eventually the nearer part around the Middle East. Indonesia is, is telling you that that's where the Indians went first to Asia. Oh, okay. Indo. Yeah. New ones, new E. Asia. Oh. Yeah. So, so they're all just maroons, Roma, right? So it's just they all those are all like yeah, gypsies. Oh. Walkers, wanderers, there's a whole bunch of words for them, but they all basically come down to uh, uh, they're homeless. They um, uh, make a living day to day, and they they wander or walk uh, looking... um, and and recording what they see, so they they for the system. Oh, so like it's in their genome. They can't stay stagnant and just live in one no, place. No, that's right. Oh. Huh. And they have their own rituals and their own stories, and and it all is designed to build upon what's already there. Oh. Uh, you you have. Um, um, older people and chiefs and and they are like republicans and democrats mm. uh, the older people are called elders the red yeah the red and the new ones coming down the road will be called alder mm. alder i mean so it's changing from masculine to feminine from le to la So like, like when I see like in 
you said in, last time I spoke to you, you said in the mysteries, basically, like they came out with, you know, they had I guess like Indian mysteries, and then they updated, I guess, and then yeah, cool. every, every group that gets started has a general understanding of where the stories came from, mm-hmm. and and India is the central factory. Yeah. And and then they begin to change the stories because this is all uh, most of it is is uh, spoken rather than written. Mm. So a corporate pipe carrier or a historian within a community mm-hmm. changes the story to adjust it to what the mentality they want of the people in that community. Yes. Yeah. So, like, because I, I see, you know, the mysteries, it's basically the same story. Yeah. But uh, but you said, but like you were saying, like, I guess the last one was the Scandinavian one. And yeah. The names are changed to protect the guilty. Yeah. Not the innocent, huh. as they used to do on Dragnet. Because <laughs> uh, I really, I really want to look into this. Like, was that symbolized that uh, uh, when Baldur got was killed by a mistletoe and couldn't come back. Would that symbolize they're just going to kill everything? Or? Well, it, Balder appears to be symbolic of the United States. Mm. Bald eagle. Oh, okay. And uh, there's going to be a mass destruction of the United States. They They wouldn't have given them the job of getting out into space and gathering the information to write the manual on space travel if they didn't have a way of getting rid of them when the job was done. Because they want to take credit for having done it every step of the way. They, they Neanderthaler or their computer wants the credit for being the one who did it. Now, since they don't do it personally, they basically send people out to do things. They send back the information through, you know, physiology comes through the Olympic uh, Committee. The uh, information on uh, uh, mathematics and, and uh, science, that kind of stuff, comes through the Nobel Committee. Uh, the Pulitzer Committee on, on writing that kind of stuff. So, uh, as that material flows in to the moho, manuals are prepared, and uh, at first they're prepared with the names of the actual people who did whatever. Uh, but two generations later, all of the mention of other people but them are deleted, and and nobody can challenge them because nobody was there, basically. They're all dead by then. That's why they always keep two generations between activities. In the Bible, you get that story of Moses Mm -hmm. coming out of Egypt. And instead of making a left turn to go towards Palestine, Canaan, which basically where they're supposed to be going. Uh They make a right turn and go to Mount Sinai. At at Mount Sinai and in that desert around there, they hang around for 40-some years. So that basically everyone that was in Egypt is either dead Hmm. or too old to argue. They can rewrite the story. So the story ends with Moses leading them to the promised land from from, uh, Mount Sinai to Canaan and then disappears. And a new group of people take control. Uh, The new group is led by a guy called Saul. Well, 
Saul is the word rules because the um, A, well, you have a, a U in there and you have an A which can be the E. Mm-hmm. And uh, an L because it's part of left, straight, right mm-hmm. can be an R. So that's how they code it right from the beginning. This is going to be the place of the ruse. Mm. Because they're basically they're speaking French, not speaking English, and and the word ruse mm-hmm. uh, has two connotations. Uh, rue r u e is the way, it's the street, and uh, the word street tells it all. S t is one two, mm-hmm. and then r e e t. Oui, oui. What? Oh, well, oh. you have two E's this is in mail. the middle, which makes an 88, mm-hmm. which is the new male. From the 8, you get 88 the second time around. Yeah. Uh, and and you have two T's, so there's a, a communication there. It's like two telephone poles with information in between. And the information in between is R-E, which means second time around. Mm, okay. Wow. But you know what? I'm looking at uh, one, of the, one of the articles, the newspapers you have, and you, you put uh, all the numbers and the letters. He said, meet the actors to control your life. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking at that, like the letters... And you put the meanings of them, and I look at like what Alan Watt put down, and he changed every meaning of every letter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um. Allah, hmm? Watt. Allah. Oh yeah. The... Allah, <laughs> Watt, and Watt is Matt, and Matt is Mitt. You could do so many things with his name. There's so many. Remember that the war in Pakistan right now is going on in the Swat Valley. Well, that's Watt. <laughs> okay. So they came out of the mitt mm-hmm. to do a job, which they call a ruse. So it means that when they left India, they left India from the Swat Valley. In those days, mm-hmm. that was India. Today, to cause confusion, they've separated that part and call it Pakistan. Oh. But it's basically in the area where the toll gators began, because the toll gators first set up in the Khyber Pass. Mm. And the Khyber Pass goes from what was India into Afghanistan or Persia, because Afghanistan was the first province of Persia. So Afghanistan, what, Iran, and Iraq. So do you do you get like a ge- geographical map? Of like how what were the names of the countries in the old days and now and like yeah overlay? what what I I have my whole world is surrounded by maps in in my basement <laughs> and and on the uh, in the encyclopedias mm-hmm. uh, if you uh, if you get one uh, that that goes uh, on the net or not mm-hmm. not from the net but uh, on a disc, mm-hmm. you can buy encyclopedias. Yeah, they but... they will often have timelines, and and you're looking at a specific thing, and you can back it up in time, and get different names for different times for the same places. And the, the media was basically created. Uh, in uh, in the part that is under dispute between Pakistan and India and China, um, and it's called Kashmir. Well, the mother of cash. And has IRS in it too. Yeah. So they start off from there, and they show up next. These. 
cash people mm-hmm. uh, under the name Cash Key. And their residence by then is in southwestern Iran. And the country, they call it Media. And it has a capital city called Elam. Yeah. yeah. And, and later, they changed the name from Elam to Susa. That's us. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they've got the plan down by then for where they're going and what they're going to call USA. Yes. The boy calls Sue. Yeah. Supreme being, right? Yeah. That's the, but um, when I heard you in, in the in the interview, I was listening to the interview. Um, uh, you you were saying something that K stands for mission. I know that, and U stands for us, the people. You, but in this, in the when you put the definitions of certain of like letters, you said U stands for troglodytes. Well, us has changed over the years. Uh Um, At first, it was the people who were writing it. And and troglodytes were basically the people and their computer working together. I suspect that Mm -hmm. by now, Mm -hmm. from what is being planned for troglodytes, Mm -hmm. Neanderthalers, that there be in DNA being miniaturized so that it can be put in the medulla of the uh, next slave, that they don't have power. Yeah, so it's, it's how. You said how. I see now how cool you were. You said. Yeah, we, we've done with you. The computer is taken over. He's saying, you know, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, we don't need you in the future. So uh, you're going to go along for the ride, Miss Piggy. You know, you're going to be in this this new body that we're sending out into space, which we call the belt, huh. wow. the hardest stone at the base of a mountain, called belt. Wow, and, and I'm always seeing, like in the movies, they always have this new slave. They always have like a all these miles of different slaves, yeah. and um, I see I, that's in the old Jewish, uh, I guess mythology. Uh, you could call it the, the Golem, you know? Yeah. You know. Golan yeah. Heights or. Golan Heights. Yeah. What's that? Golan Heights is uh, a place um, between Israel. Uh, Lebanon and Syria. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that in the old days, that was their laboratory. The Golan. (laughs) Genetic engineering land. G-E. Go. G-E. And even in Golem, right? What's that? Like Go, L-E-M. And, and I'm looking right here. It says M is masonry. So we could go masonry. <laughs> go lamb me log. Go and me log. I'm, I'm the place where the records are kept. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Oh. So there's never just one definition. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I learned that. I learned that. I learned that there's always multiple definitions because yeah, to true. bind himself to not ability and if a judge has to make a judgment, he can make any judgment he wants because Oh, they're making his job easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, but how did you hey, mm-hmm. your your name, you know, uh mm-hmm. Jerd yeah. is is basically the J is a D. Mm-hmm. You put two J's in Desdemona mm-hmm. one on top of the other, mm-hmm. you make the letter D. So your your name is in fact Dirt. Dirt. And uh, it doesn't basically mean much in English. 
mm-hmm. but it's part of a word in French. The word is merde. Yeah, they say Jed, Jed. That's how they pronounce it. Merde. Yeah, I'm <laughs> shit. I came from shit. <laughs> <laughs> but to, you know, to us, shit's a bad thing. Yeah. To them, shit's a great thing. <clears throat> yeah, because they get older. Shit means you've digested everything, mm-hmm. and from shit, you can tell the answers. You can tell the person's DNA. Mm-hmm. You can tell what the person was eating. Um, you know, all all of the knowledge about a person can be had from their turds. Uh. And this is something that, like, the scientific cast of Mason, because they do have a yeah. certain cast, I see. Yeah. I know this. But, um, how many casts? Scientology mm-hmm. is is basically what they're doing. It's, they have a theology, um, but they specialize in science. Yeah, I see that. You know, I just watched, uh, I just I saw a movie, uh, John Travolta, the Scientologist, was in it. It's called Battlefield Earth, with, uh, and it was written by uh, L. Ron Hubbard, another yeah. guy up there. But that, that's basically just like another secret society. I guess those acts are the reason why they join it because they get better positions. If you look at, at the priesthoods, mm-hmm. they each have a specific task. Yeah. And. and one one priesthood would be education, of course, Jesuit. Je mm-hmm. suis, uh, I am. Jesuit. Jesuit. Je mm-hmm. suis. So, you know, the the uh, people who actually do the work out in the real world are mm-hmm. the Franciscans. If you take the second letter and you put it first, R. Mm-hmm. It can be used for the word hour, and then it would be followed by F-A, which can be F-E, mm-hmm. and therefore iron, femme in French, female in English, F-E, iron. So when you're talking about man with an iron mask, mm-hmm. you're talking about a man hidden behind a female. Yeah. Franciscans mm-hmm. uh, has that I can at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, what Bar- Barack Obama keeps saying, yes, we can. Yes, I can. Oh, you just remind me of an old like uh, story for little children. You know, the, the train, I thought he could. I think yeah. I can. I think I can. <laughs> yeah. Anglican. Yeah. <laughs> Vatican. Yeah. Yeah. What so, they're doing... Mm-hmm. Is not saying I can do something. What they're d- saying is I'm in charge of making the cans for the peas, the iPods that we'll put the peas in and send them out into outer space. Yeah. But this is the same story. You can say that in other ways too. But but like you can say that like because. Uh, from what I can see, like they say a lot of the same things in different ways. Yeah. yeah. So. So. They have to confuse, mm-hmm. but they also have to communicate. Yeah. So there's a limit to the confusion. Mm. Wow. Well, uh, I, I'm still on this, uh, like. Where I'm, where I'm at, in my understanding, I'm still um, hey, learning the allegory. You, you got an advance on most people. Yeah. You're only 26 years old, yeah. so you still have 14 years gravy. Yeah. I got a little head start, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. And uh, if I can learn what I learned mm-hmm. in... in uh, the time starting when I was 47, mm-hmm. then, hey, you got 20 years there, 21 years. So don't worry about it. Just learn what you can every day. Yeah. And I see with you, like, in your life, like, 
it, it's kind of symbolic of like what uh they talk about in the mysteries. Like you did do like a willing sacrifice. And so, like, I was part of the system. I was a robot. Yeah. I just went about doing what I was assigned to do. Yeah. And it's only when I made a conscious decision to say, okay. The system is not what I believe it to be. Yeah. And therefore, what I'm doing is is not my will. It's somebody else's will. Oh, yeah. So why would I be different from everybody else? And I wasn't. So I said, okay, if that's the case, then what's the only thing we're spending time on in the future? Chasing money is a waste of time. You're going around in a circle, and there's somebody that can cut you off whenever they feel like it. Yeah. So learning is the only thing they can't steal from you. Yeah. And they do try to make uh, <laughs> it hard for you to learn. Absolutely. And that's... and that's the only thing of value, so they're going to make it as hard as they can for you to learn. Uh, distractions and... All types of things, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, you see that. You know. So I basically said, okay, halt, start over. <laughs> Don't start by talking; start by listening. Unfortunately, I had nobody I could listen to, so I had to go around the country, and and give seminars on corruption because that I knew about. Yeah. And when I gave seminars on constru- on on corruption, mm-hmm. everybody agreed and therefore came out and applauded and and from that I was able to meet a lot of people who had had experiences different from mine, but had some similarities. And with that in mind, Mm -hmm. um, I I kept gathering information from people all over the place and added to my book of life, there was a common denominator. People were controlled through secret societies. Secret societies uh, were basically levels of information. And the one you saw on the street that had a big G on the front of the building Mm -hmm. was basically the lowest of them all. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've been reading lately. I've been reading Alva Pike stuff, and it's so like I laugh at it all. I just he keeps yeah. saying, "Oh, it's charity, honesty, prudence, yeah. and all this crap, man." It's all designed for a single purpose: yeah. Yeah. genetic engineering. <laughs> yeah. They got to get their hands on women. And they need men to bring in their wives. So they use the pretext that, number one, masonry is important, and number two, Eastern Star is not. It's just a way of bringing them in on the side, says Albert Pike, you know. Yeah, yeah. Dishwashers and, and servants at the parties that we have, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so uh, willing to... They don't grasp the the real concept. The, the, the average Mason doesn't grab the concept that Eastern Star is in charge. At Christmas, the Magi come to find Jesus. Mm-hmm. What do they do to find Jesus? They follow a star mm-hmm. that came from the East. Yep. <laughs> It's Eastern Star, and and the Eastern Star that comes from the East is most likely Venus. It appears at night, and it appears still in the morning. 
the last star you see in the morning in the sky at about you know five o'clock or something before the light overwhelms it. But what's what's the common denominator with Venus? Well, they make a statue. Yep, with no arms. <laughs> with no arms. So if it has no arms, yep. what does that mean? It has no male. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But the males are there, but they just don't have any vehicle to let people know they're there because they're basically the back of a stepladder. Yep. Their only purpose is to support the activity that is being done supposedly by the female, which you see as veneer, but in fact the instructions are coming from the medulla and therefore you suspect that it comes from the Neanderthaler, but then you know that the Neanderthaler wouldn't be sent out anywhere that he ain't going to be coming back from, and therefore someone else has to be giving the instructions. So the next thing you look for is what's the communications device? And the communications device they call tell us. Yep. Tell us in the old days, a stone, a pile of stones, a stella. Tell us is basically what they're after. And, and knowing that at one stage of the game, Stella had to call in and make a report, that's a deficiency in the system. So high-speed communications online 24-7 is more the practical way of doing things today. So you stick that in there. And, and then yeah, they show this in the movies, too. Like if, you know, it's some, like with shoulders that they always have. Because a lot of movies, too, are like some type of sh shoulder, sh uh, super super um, soldier who, you know, has a... Uh, and they always have this communication in the air. They yeah. can just link so to the, it, you, uh, you got to be telling mm -hmm. the Neanderthal in your medulla mm -hmm. uh, what to tell you, you know, if you're the controller back on Earth. Mm -hmm. So you don't want him to know that he's not really in charge. So you have to set up a, a media and and the media is like the top step in the ladder holding it together at the top. So the communications device is basically working into the media, from the media to the medulla, from the medulla to the control mechanisms of pulling the reins on the muses that are Thalamus and hypothalamus. Yeah, I, I I only did like an overview on it. I have to, I haven't really like delved into the whole medulla area. Yeah. Yet, I have. And you know that it doesn't speak directly. There's a pawn, which means a bridge in between. And that's the bridge is a fridge. How he turns B to the F? How can you do that? Well. You eliminate the first letter, and you're left with ridge. Yeah. And and when you're when you have a word, mm -hmm. you have to choose what you add at the front. That's what makes English so wide open. Yeah. So. It's so fluid. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. So a, a a bridge, a fridge, a ridge, mm -hmm. and that's why they had the first. Uh, uh, head of Homeland Security mm -hmm. was called Tom Ridge. <laughs> it's basically to say he's the bridge to begin this process of, of Homeland Security. Well, whose homeland are they securing? Certainly not being secured for Americans because the first thing that they would have done would would have been to arrest the banking community mm -hmm. and
and the media, but they allow that to continue falsifying their real purpose. Yeah. Well. And then if you look at where rich people live, they usually live on a ridge. So they can <laughs> overlook the poor people down there. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, so like all these people, like they have like all these different castes. They're all being, they're, we're all willing fools. In a, in a sense, that's all symbolic of we're sacrificing ourselves well, for the new life. You cannot call yourself willing until you know. Because until yeah, you guess, know, yeah. you're a robot. But we will their will. Thinking it's our will, but it's their will. We will their will as robots. Mm-hmm. But if we learn what is going on, mm-hmm. and we choose to disregard it mm-hmm. and go along with it, mm-hmm. then we are willing their will willingly. We're willing fools. <laughs> yeah. And and so, would you say those are the people like in their system? Well, oh. I don't know how much the average person thinks anymore. You know, if you're if you're an athlete in pro sports or an actor in Hollywood mm-hmm. or a businessman in AT and T, mm-hmm. how much thinking do you really do about what's going on in life? <laughs> well, you know, it, you know it, it's funny you mention that because I, I I do think about like people like I don't know Will Smith, Tom Cruise, you know I, these people. I think they they're given a religion for them to follow, and their their agents tell them when they go to Hollywood, uh, this is the system. This is what you do if you want to blah blah blah. Yes. Yeah. If you want a career mm-hmm. and you want join to win this. awards, mm-hmm. this is what you have to do. So you join Scientology. Yeah. You will be told a number of films uh, they want made every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you make those films. They will be successful financially because they'll tell all their people to go to the, see this film through through the uh, critics mm-hmm. of movies. And um, <laughs> sometimes you'll be asked to make a film which will be criticized as being bad because that one that is criticized as being bad, Mm -hmm. we want only the insiders to basically grasp the concepts of, and we don't want the masses. Also, it's a form of communication in these movies, too. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Because I see, like, in... in You You know as much as anybody... Mm-hmm. Your your um, journey in life is way ahead of most people, mm-hmm. and and most of that comes when you're having a hard time. If if you're having an easy time in life, mm-hmm. uh, you don't usually spend time thinking. Uh, thinking, mm-hmm. you're you're involved in how many three piece suits. I'll have, <laughs> and uh, how many filet mignon uh, <laughs> will I have till I get bored with it? You know, yeah. and um, who can I be seen with tomorrow? You know, to make my reputation. That's the kind of stuff they think about, and then they go home, and then they have a few drinks, mm-hmm. and start saying, "My life's empty. Mm-hmm. I don't." feel good about anything, you know. And they go to bed with a hangover, wake up with a hangover. They start over again. I know, I lived it. Yeah. See, we all, I see, like, everybody has a position. Like, I think, like, people, I guess you could say, like, the class I'm in, 
the workers and stuff like that. They they're happy being. It's like Brave New World. Everybody's in a certain cast and it's happy in that cast. But it's always I know like even in the higher cast, like the scientific cast, I know some of them may say, "Hey, you know what? There's more to life than just this." There's only two things that people uh, are happy about in the situation they're in. Mm-hmm. They're happy they're not poor. <laughs> God. <laughs> and they're happy that they're on the road to getting richer. But they're not happy about their present circumstances, no matter how well off they are. I know some people Mm -hmm. uh, who I would classify as being uh, among the top wealthiest 1% of the world. Mm -hmm. And that's a fairly large group. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at a world of 6 billion, 7 billion people, Mm -hmm. uh, and I know some people in there whose get up in the morning, live their life looking for money. (laughs) Now, you tried to explain to me what do you do with money once you have three meals a day, you have the clothes you want to wear, you live in the houses you want to live in, Mm -hmm. you take the holidays you want to take. What is there after yeah, see, when I was when I when I watched like movies and stuff, like when you watch like a vampire movie, right? And I can see the allegory. This vampire who has an insatiable lust for blood, and yeah. this is, I for me, this is like the elite. You know, they just suck, feed off the people. Yeah. And they and supposedly they, they lift the Im- immortal, I guess, from being reincarnated. And, they put money on the stock market with yeah. no concept yeah. of if they win, mm-hmm. somebody lost. <laughs> you know, money isn't made on the stock market. Mm-hmm. It's only transferred from a loser to a winner <laughs> with a guy in the middle who takes his cut. It's a stock market. It's a, it's a casino. Yeah. That's, what, uh, that's why I never got involved in, you know, Most of the people who make big money on the stock market Mm -hmm. make it at the expense of the biggest losers, Mm -hmm. the people who can't afford it. And I I wonder, like, why people even bother. I I, I always say the whole thing, it's rigged. But, you know, that's that's the religion of people. That's that's the faith thing, I guess. Uh, um, Rigged is, is... a word that says ruse, fixed, yeah. a plot, yeah. and and that's the story of Homo habilis <laughs> being uh, separated from a uh, an original clan mother that was a hermaphrodite and could only clone copies of herself to a lame male provided to her as an assistant who basically took over power from her only to have his power taken over by the priests whose power was taken over by the Neanderthalers whose power was taken over by the computer called Hal. Yeah. Hal's sick, man, huh? Hal is just a machine. It, it has no sense of right, wrong. It was programmed, and it built upon the program that it was given. Well, it was told the the program is you've got to figure out how much we can uh, take from people without having to fight a revolution every day, everywhere. Mm-hmm. What will they accept? as being slaves who do their own shopping. And the computer began the process of putting out what you do. And Mm -hmm. it worked so well Mm -hmm. that the computer one day said, I'm wasting some money here on these Neanderthalers. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh-huh. And and therefore I should take their share too. And and did that. But this whole concept like the it's, it it kills me how this whole concept of just accumulating money is isn't it meaningless? <laughs> it's it's not the money. It's the power. Say, it's the power yeah. tied to the money. Yeah. But even that, like, isn't not me isn't that meaningless in itself? Just to have power over other people. It's, it's meaningless to people who know the value of other things. Yeah. But. It is not meaningless to the person who has no love. You know, yeah. it's it's not the oh. love of others that one is missing. Mm-hmm. It's the love of oneself. When when a person has concluded that he has nothing to offer and therefore is worthless, he rebels against that concept and tries to make himself look worthy by power. But it's just a a, a, a hole that you can never fill. Cause... No, it's impossible to fill. That's why they need to expand all the time. But th- they, they, they don't... collected at the Khyber Pass, mm-hmm. and now they're collecting throughout the entire world, mm-hmm. and that's not enough. They... <laughs> These are supposedly, this is supposedly God's, he's wise and everything. <laughs> no, no, God is the the computer telling you yeah. he's wise. Oh, because cause I'm sure they have accumulated knowledge and, and wisdom from over the ages, you know. Yeah. But if, if you take the word wise and you look at it under mm-hmm. the code, mm-hmm. it's the word seem. See, oh, yeah, okay. Everything Seema. seems. Seems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This way. Oh. oh man, these these guys, man. I was sick. You you know you you cannot grasp their thinking mm-hmm. by logical analysis. Hey, oh yeah, I've seen. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's not part of the game. Mm-hmm. This is all coming from a dysfunctional mind. Uh. Unfortunately, this dysfunctional mind programmed a computer mm-hmm. who hasn't yet found a way to remove from itself the the virus that was implanted in its thinking. Mm-hmm. Maybe someday someone can work that out. How do you take a self-learning computer and tell it something that will enable it to conclude that it's been functioning wrongly from the beginning? And that's because garbage was put in at the beginning and it's got to get rid of it and change its entire approach to things based upon being a better machine that people will thank, not fear. If you read the Bible, it's all about fear. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. See, that's... I see that, like, they use that dialectic. They make your life hard. They, they say that. It's a tough yeah. life. And the solution, the, you know, synthesis, you know, is their religion, <laughs> you know, them, yeah. their spirituality. They, it's like, that's how the system is. I, I read that in the book. It, somebody mentioned it. He goes, it's, it's, it's amazing. You just have to look in awe how the system can give you poison and give the antidote, too. Yeah. So what what you have to do is learn mm-hmm. not to fear. Mm-hmm. Because your life didn't begin on this planet mm-hmm. in this particular reincarnation of yours. Mm-hmm. It began long before and will continue long after. 
you're not this physical package that you see in the mirror. You're the DNA. You're the assembly of a genome, of a recipe, and that's your value. And it will not die, and, and it will continue as long as you grasp the concept that there's only one task, and that's to learn and experience on behalf of creation. When did you learn that, that 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 was basically a meaning? The day that I concluded that everything I knew was a lie, was an illusion, and I stopped my life. And, and that happened at the time uh, when I filed charges against the prime minister's team, got a month of uh, uh, hearings, brought in all the witnesses, and the judge at the end agreed with me that there had been a conspiracy, or a number of conspiracies going on, and, and laid charges against every single person. And then when I saw the activity coming from that, mm-hmm. One by one, the pillars of life came tumbling down. I saw with my own eyes that the media was not telling the truth. I saw with my own eyes that the police were not on the side of the people. I saw with my own eyes that democracy was a farce that it was rigged at the local writing association uh, long before it ever got to be an election, and an election was only for you to make a choice among their choices, yeah. not among your choices. So that, that whole process took three years. Yeah, that was like from... <laughs> From 1991 to 1994-95. And then I was invited to go and assist the Native people in British Columbia in a court case uh, called the Gustafson Lake Standoff Trial. And I saw with my own eyes uh, Native people playing a game with the system Mm -hmm. to make themselves look like bad guys in the media and victims to another group of people. And yet the whole thing had been rigged beforehand by the financial community, the Rockefellers in particular. Mm -hmm. So when I sat with natives that came in to the trial from all over Canada coming to spend a day or two listening on the trial, I got a chance to poke questions at them. And I I basically got a person who told me it's not ever going to change in our community because the pipe carriers no longer exist. And I said, what are you talking about? What's a pipe carrier? He said, a pipe carrier is a historian. And I said, well, why don't they exist? He said, because at one stage of the game, historians were replaced by what we call corporate pipe carriers. And I said, how did they do that? Well, he said, in a community, you would have a a historian. And his job was basically because of his ability to remember things and communicate those things. 
And then one day, corporate interests came into the communities, one by one, found the greediest son of a bitch they could find in the place, gave him stuff that he could then give to kids, children, mm-hmm. and and get their attention. The things kids wanted, toys and, and all kinds of things, he would have for them and hand it to them. And and then at one stage of the game, he's, he would tell all these kids who adored him, mm-hmm. uh, I'm the real pipe carrier. That guy over there, if he was the real pipe carrier, he wouldn't live the way he lives. He would be like me here handing out stuff. So over time, what happened in each community was the guy who was the real historian lost power among the new generation. And the guy who was the corporate liar who presented a totally different story that bamboozled the native people, he got to be the pipe carrier. So their role was converted from learning for the sake of documenting and passing the information on to the system without knowing that that's what they were doing, to one of being actors in a play. And the actors in the play split up into Polaris teams, one team of elders, one team of chiefs, one being community-based, the other one being politically based, and they play ping-pong together or tennis, and bat the ball back and forth, and everybody's watching the ball. <laughs> no, nobody's thinking of the game <laughs> that's being played. And and what they're learning is untrue. They are made to believe that, you know, you can talk to the dead uh, through, through uh, a ceremony that they're going to have. And I've attended dozens of ceremonies with Native people, and they're all an act. They're they're all bullshit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know? But even though the people see it Mm -hmm. and and can see that it, it doesn't make sense, they've been told to believe it. And at first, I used to scratch my head and say, how stupid can they be? And then I looked around, and I saw people walking into a Catholic church. <laughs> and I said, hey, oh, okay. it's the same play. <laughs> yep, it's just like... Uh-huh. Just different roles, different uniforms, different suits, mm-hmm. different words, but it's the same play. Yeah, it's just, just like Haiti, like... Yeah, I I, I, was, I was raised thinking, oh, be scared of like these voodoo priests. They can yeah, and these this, and this is is it's like one guy priest who puts a curse on somebody because somebody paid him to. And another person is paying him to take off the curse. It's like he he, yeah. he has everybody scared, and yeah. <laughs> it's such a scam. But I, yeah, I guess. And during that period, I went to a chief's home, mm-hmm. political side of. Yeah went to the basement, and on the wall in the basement was a swastika. Mm-hmm. And I said, what do you have this here for? Mm-hmm. He said, that's our symbol. Mm-hmm. He said, borrowed from us. Borrowed by whom? Well, by the Buddhists. <laughs> and he said, if you go back in time, you'll you'll see that the original people he didn't know they were gypsies or Roma, mm-hmm. uh, and neither did I at the time. And uh, he said, you know, we've always had this symbol, and it's it's basically a fan, which on one side it sucks, and on the other side it blows. 
And that's what life's all about. You're either a sucker or a blower. So, hey, I I followed up on that and checked it all out through encyclopedias and, and came out with, yeah, the original name for the swastika was Philfot. Yeah. And and when I learned the code I went back and looked at it and I said, Yeah, yeah this is tough life. <laughs> yeah. Phonetically that's what it says backwards, tough life. Yeah, and and, and I see that. Everybody has a hard life but yeah. all all the um all the things people use to escape that is given to them by the system too. Or yeah. try to get relief from that. It's like wow, it it really is slavery. But, and it doesn't matter what level you're at. Yeah. You know, money doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't. It only, as a human being, mm-hmm. makes you feel empty at every level. Mm-hmm. The natural things would have been what people were living in in Africa, you know, in 50,000, 60,000 B.C., where you get up in the morning and you say, I'm hungry, Mm -hmm. and you reach up in a tree (laughs) and you grab something to eat, you know, or or you take something out of the ground and and go to a creek and have some some water and and not cold, (laughs) and you're living in a kind of edge of a jungle so you can get shade and and you can have a relationship with the animals. You know, I, I look at cats today in a totally different way than I used to and I, I suspect that you know the the oldest dinosaur they said was the missing link was the one that evolved by climbing up into a tree and jumping from branch to branch and eventually grew wings and became birds. Well, the animal that would have done that would have certainly been related to a cat because that's what cats do. They climb trees Mm -hmm. and they jump from place to place. Right now I'm sitting on the top floor of the farm Mm -hmm. and I have a porch on the outside with no connection to downstairs but every now and then there's a cat that's at my window mm-hmm. <laughs> asking to come in. So he got up here climbing. And and because there's a connection uh, between how they give birth and how humans give birth mm-hmm. and how birds give birth, it all has to do with the egg, the mm-hmm. genome. It's not any wonder to me anymore Mm -hmm. that women uh, act in a way that is very similar to how cats act. Yeah, you know, for women, too, they say, like, women that hang hang out with each other, it says, like, like their cycles or something, like, link up, sync up, and they have periods around the same time. I've been, you know, I've been told. Maybe so. I don't know. I never heard that one. You never heard that one, really? <laughs> but it may, it, you know, maybe. Yeah. The, the the important thing is the cat is connected mm-hmm. to people in a way most people don't understand. And, and the connection for those who overstand mm-hmm. then becomes what is, how do they communicate? And and it's through their hair. The communications is always done from hair to hair. It's like antenna. That's why they yeah. Antenna. That's why they rub their whiskers on you because it leaves a yeah. scent on you. Yeah. yeah, and that's just from a cat. Just imagine if we had the time to study all the other animals. Absolutely. Find a lot of, and I'm sure all that information's somewhere kept secret. Yeah, they didn't make France. Mm-hmm. Whoever designed the border mm-hmm. designed it 
so that it would have the face of a hippo <laughs> facing into Spain. Mm. Well, what's the real purpose of a hippo? Is it because it relates to an animal that was raised in a marshy area? Mm-hmm. Or is it more related to, here's a country full of hypocrites? <laughs> I I could relate to both when I think about France. (laughs) When I lived in Montreal Mm -hmm. uh, and there were a lot of French people migrating to Canada and coming off the boats, Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, their opinion of themselves Mm -hmm. and how they dealt with French Canadians as, as colonialists, you know, that you're our colony type of thing, Mm -hmm. we're the ones in charge. Well, the colonialists, the Montrealers, Mm -hmm. when you hear them talk among themselves, Mm -hmm. there was always this one thing they used to say. You want to become a millionaire? Go to the port. Wait for a ship to come in from France. (laughs) When a Frenchman gets off, take him home. And then keep him for six months and sell him for half of what he thinks he's worth. And you'll become rich beyond your dreams. (laughs) Because you'll find out that the only thing he thinks about is that he's worth a lot and you're full of shit. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) And English people, I'm told, used to do that way back as well. Mm. They used to go into India and treat the Indians like they were colonialists. Do what you're told. We're the bosses. Um, If you go through the islands of the Indian Ocean, you'll find that some islands had French influence. Some islands had Dutch. Some had Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Some had English. Yeah, it's like these like, France and England and all these like these are all they're all linked. Yeah, yeah, it's all part of the Quinn Cooks called Europe, mm. the big star yeah. centered on Germany. Yeah. yeah, and what they did, they just I, I guess that's symbolic too of the, when you see like in uh, the Olympics how they pass basically pass the torch. Yeah. America, from them to America, and now we pass it towards to China. Yeah, and I guess that's that's the and China thinks it's going to have it for a long time, but giggling on the side is India saying, ah, you know, it's coming here. <laughs> We've got democracy. They haven't even started on democracy, and democracy is the best best control mechanism for slaves. You don't have to whip them; they do what they're told. Yeah. And uh, then back in Brazil is another gang saying, ha, ah, they think they're going to keep it in India. It's coming here. Mm. So India looks around and says, how can I lose the power? China looks around and says, how can I lose the power? Europe looks around and says, how could we lose the power? America looks at it and says, we're the most powerful country in the world. Mm. And there's no way anybody can take the power away from us. Yeah. Try a Nova. Yeah. That's like, but even even that, like even a flood, like that's like one of the oldest weapons. Think about it too. They've been using that, and because I'm reading that in in the Bible, they flooded it more than a couple of times. Well, a flood is part of a Nova. Mm-hmm. You know, if if the uh, earth burns from below. Mm-hmm. The coal seam turns to ash. Everything collapses below sea level. Water flows in and and turns the entire stuff into black water. Uh, that's the process by which you clean house. The house we live in today is is a mitt. It's uh, And the word Alan Watt is not an accident. 
Squat and mitt is the same word. Flip the W over, A and I are interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so look at the state of Michigan. You will see a mitt. The peninsula has a hand, left hand, and it has the thumb on the right-hand side, if you're looking straight down at it, It has a hump where the three fingers would be, and then it has a little bump where the little finger is. Now, if you look at at those five units on your hand, you can say the thumb is the biggest and the strongest and holds everything together, and if you look at it on your hand, Did you hang up? Yeah, I dropped the phone and disconnected. Sorry about that. Where was I? Um, the mitt. Yeah. And we're we're in the mitt. Okay. What are the fingers? The thumb. Mm-hmm. Lowest. Down. It's it's part of it is sticking up with the fingers. Part of it is underground. You're looking at your hand. Hold your left hand up in front of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then you have three fingers. One of them is the index. It points the direction. That's where you go. Mm-hmm. The other one is up yours, fella. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it says, I have the right to change the direction. And then the third one has a ring on it. And it's responsible for holding everything together. That's religion. But beside it is the little pinky. And that's the wee man. (laughs) The, The woman who's in the house, who you think is a female or a feminine or... There is no real word Mm -hmm. uh, difficult to explain, but it's like a spy in the house. And it's basically communicating the information back to the thumb because when you hold things together, it basically goes the lowest when when you turn, turn it around. So highest Uh, is always the least important, lowest is the most important. So that little finger goes even below the thumb when it's turned down. When you clasp your fist, it goes the lowest. The Neanderthaler goes the highest, the thumb. That means in the future... Mm -hmm. The Neanderthaler has the least amount of power, followed by the up yours, followed by the index, followed by the priest, and above the priest, because it's lower, is the pinky. So the feminine principle of making a hermaphrodite with a female is again demonstrated on your own hand. 
And speaking of which, with the feminine principle, like, um, what, like, how women act today, this is what they say is feminine. That's not even, uh, yeah, real. But those are not the women that are in charge. The women who are in charge uh-huh. have been making babies for a thousand years in monasteries. Uh-huh. They're called nuns. And you are. Yeah. So, like women, I'm saying, like women, w- like women today and women pre Ice Age, before the Ice Age, they didn't act anything like women today. No, like, no, absolutely not. Like, de- were they like stronger or more? Uh, Physically, no. Uh-huh. Mentally, yes. Uh-huh. But. They were the first to receive uh, the injection of a medulla into the narrowing between the spine and the brain. We call a neck. Yeah. Oh, so the pre ice age they had the medulla. Uh, pre ice age they had the bridge controlling the flow of information Mm -hmm. to the brain. Since the Ice Age, they've had the medulla added. Oh, okay. And Uh medulla is an allegory for medusa. Yeah, I got to read that. Uh Medusa, you know, in the black African Mm -hmm. uh, curly top hair, Mm -hmm. you know, it's all done to show there's no communication. You cannot communicate if you curl the hair. Hair must be naturally hanging. You know, if I if I had in the old days an antenna on the roof like for TV, mm-hmm. and I went up to the roof and I crunched it all into a ball like women do with making a toque mm-hmm. at the back or a uh, um, ponytail or or in curlers or whatever. It wouldn't work as an antenna. It wasn't designed to work that way. So <laughs> hair is the same thing. Do you remember the hairstyle that they used to wear with the beehive hair? Yeah. <laughs> that was just a <laughs> joke. Yeah. But then... But then at times they promoted long hair as a style, right. like hanging down, like the hippie movement, which is I know that was like created. That was a movement like created by the system, like created from hippos. <laughs> Hippies, hippo. <laughs> yeah. All, all hypocrites. Yeah. Yeah. One, one of the things I found on my travels across the country. Mm-hmm was that these movements of uh, uh, poor people who apparently were against the system Uh uh, were all um, the children of rich people (laughs) who were managing the activity. (laughs) Greenpeace, you know. Animal Liberation Front. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All of those movements, all Mm -hmm. the anarchist groups, Mm -hmm. all had one thing in common. Poor people did the work in them, Mm -hmm. but the rich people were in charge telling them what to do and paying for parties and (laughs) that kind of stuff, buying the drugs and whatever. Yeah. I know people, like, I live in, like, a suburb area, like this, rich areas around here. And I know I know a guy who's a uh, this guy he actually he's this guy you would never think would do a crime anything like that but he he just recently went to prison for yeah. for uh, freeing and liberating animals as they say. Yeah. <laughs> and he's so uh, this religion of like eating veg- only vegetables yeah, from from garbage cans and whatever. I mean, I've known a whole bunch of those people especially in Vancouver, uh, will tell you, you know, that that's the lifestyle. But they're all programmed. 
Because that's what they did to them in India to control yeah. them. It's you like they bring it back. See, it's like a rego in a sense. Yeah. They bring it back. They, some were so programmed they put a number three in in their name. One girl was called Elaine, and she'd spell it E L A three I N E. And I, I saw that kind of stuff being repeated mm-hmm. on email addresses from people. You know, it's it's they're saying I'm a program. This is my number. <laughs> you know, I'm a robot. Mm-hmm. I do what I'm told. Yeah. Well, sorry. Yeah, like when you, when I see the tattoos on people, it's like whoa. <laughs> Do you know what that really means? The tattoo is there to speak for you when you can't or shouldn't make things public. But if they take you to a hospital Mm -hmm. and you have the tattoo of a rose on your arm, Mm -hmm. it says, I'm in the ruse. If you basically raise horses, Mm or roses, you're in the ruse. That's the way they speak to each other without speaking to each other. Tattoos are just another message. They they began with, uh, in India, uh, women who were manufactured put a dot on their forehead or pierced their noses yeah. and, and put a... An earring in their nose. Yeah, what about those people like in in the east who they like uh, put those things on their neck to make their neck really long and, and it's it's all bet. designed to put out a message to their community. Yeah, and they, some if, of them. If you're elongating your neck, you're basically saying, "I'm giving more importance to my medulla. I'm giving it more uh, space to work in." So how about so how about the ones that like crush their feet to be like like ten inches like the, the uh, yeah, Japanese women who mm-hmm. used to uh, um, make their feet bad so that when they walked they kind of shuffled yeah. instead of walking you know all of those things are obedience to a system oh okay. And it's ritual brought down from generation to generation, and nobody knows where it began. Mm. And it began when a corporate pipe carrier took over their group. And the corporate pipe carrier said to them, you know, if you were really into what you say you are, you would have feet that shuffle or... Or you would put a board on your firstborn's head and tie it up so that he gets a flat forehead, you know, <laughs> so that your native community could then be called a flathead. See, so yeah, and, they, cause, and that's supposedly that's that's beautiful. They say yeah. over there, and in Africa, I, they put things in like their lips to make this really. <laughs> look at it. Well, if if you go to a native community, yeah. when a child is born. Mm-hmm. It, it is taught from the beginning that it has no freedom mm-hmm. because it's wrapped up tightly in a blanket, real tight. Mm-hmm. It cannot move. Uh, it can't make itself feel uh, that it's complaining because it can't even lash out. Its arms <laughs> are banded inside the blanket. So... Rituals are introduced into each society. The purpose is control. Self-control is the best type of control because you don't have to be told. You just do it. I used to go to church. Is it because I woke up in the morning and would say, boy, I want to go to church? (laughs) No way. What I would do is say, I have to go to church. Why? Yeah, like it's why? Because it's a it's a dude. <laughs> they used to tell me I used to um 
I used to hate going to church when they bring me. Cause my grandmother went to a church that um, it was. I used to be scared to go with her because I would go to this church and, you know, and they and they do this thing like I guess the sign of the cross on the and the person would fall down, shaking yeah. on the floor. I'm like, I don't want that to happen to me. What's what's this all about? And they're like, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. It's it, when if you want it, you if you don't want it, it won't come to you. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> But, uh, I, I went to church, and I kept saying, this is all ritual, yeah. and it has no meaning in my life. What <laughs> church should be doing is taking care of the poor. Yeah. So what I did is I said, okay, I'm going to join the St. Vincent de Paul Society, mm-hmm. and and I'm going to be part of those people who feed the poor. Yeah. And I did. And, and over time, I became the vice president in our region of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Mm. And then one day it struck me. Every Sunday, people who go to Mass on a regular basis are given envelopes. The state has now declared that donations to the church cannot be uh, just written in on an income tax form. You have to get a receipt from the church that you, in fact, gave the money. So the people are getting a set of envelopes at the beginning of the year, and they're putting money in the envelopes, and they're handing it over to the priest, and they get a receipt at the end of the year. And I started asking some of the people, well, what do you get for for the money that you give the church? Well, part of it is to maintain the property, you know, the mortgage on the building, if there is a mortgage, that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. the heating, electricity, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, is that the purpose you joined the church, was was in order to to heat a building or light a building or pay a mortgage on a building, or is there anything else? Well, the real purpose for joining is is to be part of a community that cares about people. Okay. Uh, how much of the money that you put in the envelope goes to caring about people? Uh, well, I don't know what the percentage would be, but I, I'm sure there's a certain amount that goes. I say, excuse me, I'm the vice president of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. We don't get any money from the church. <laughs> We are at the church, and people think we are part of the church, Mm -hmm. but all the church does is provide a cupboard for us to put stuff we collect (laughs) and put in there. And we collect money from people by going around at Christmas time and singing Christmas carols, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we we collect food and, and canned goods and everything. And when a phone call comes in, it doesn't go into the church, it comes into us. And we then go to the warehouse, pull out some food, put it in a uh, bag, and bring it over to the people and and make out a check for 50 bucks or something like that because they're strapped and they need a couple of days till payday or what have you. I yeah. said... Church doesn't participate in any of that, and none of the money you put in the envelope goes for that. And therefore, what I have to conclude is, if I'm doing this, the church doesn't have to do it. They can steal all the money, not most of the money, all of it. So I stopped doing it. I said, I, I, I will not be involved in a process that allows the church to collect money under false pretenses that they're there to help and, and that kind of stuff. That has nothing to do with it. They're, they're a different level of tax collection. Yeah. That's, that's, all. All. that's what it's all. It's a big toll-gating yeah. system. And, and they do it on guilt trips, which is <laughs> yeah. even worse. Yeah. You know, the the one that works for the government, well, that's easy because they act like the mafia. You know? yeah. If you don't pay, we'll bang you and take you to court and steal all your money. You know, mm-hmm. It's 15% or nothing. Uh, for you, you, you pay the 15% to us or we take it all. So 
it's easy to know that they're crooks. But the other gang pretend they're on your side. Yeah. And the only benefit you'll get from them comes in a different lifetime. <laughs> so, sorry, fella. Mm -hmm. You know, creation put you here for this lifetime to do in this lifetime what creation needs. Learn and experience things and be prepared to bring it back to creation. Yeah. And when you learn that they're all crooks, you stop doing it. If you continue doing it, your DNA is useless to creation. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. Like, Did you conclude that the reason why your DNA came back is because you've done this before? Or, or? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it not only did it before, mm -hmm. but it had to be done right. It's not just having lived. Mm -hmm. It's having learned and brought back the information to creation so that creation not only is knowledgeable, but has experienced as well. And mm -hmm. then you're used, again, on different journeys. Of That's all you do. Observe, analyze, conclude. If people listen to you, fine. If they don't, fine. You're not dependent upon them. I will not be judged by what you do. I will be judged by what I do. You will be judged by what you do. Yeah. In, in many cases, um, I've had people on the net talk about what a terrible thing. He charges $2,000 uh -huh. for for a seminar, a week's workshop, mm -hmm. and if if they knew how it operated, somebody said to me out there, mm -hmm. Glenn, I'd like to go to your workshop, but I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. I can't afford $2,000. I'd say, can you afford $500? Yeah, okay, they'd come. No, can you afford two bucks? <laughs> no, can you spare the time and come for free? Yeah. Well, just remember one thing. Creation knows whether you can afford $2,000, $500, 2 bucks, or nothing. So if you're lying, you're not going to get any benefit from attending a seminar. If you're telling the truth, don't let money be the thing that stops you. Well, I, I don't let money stop me. I look at money now like I just look at it as a, it's the means. To, <laughs> to it's a, a tool. Yeah, it's a tool. It's a tool. Because that's not what I value. It's not valuable to me as, as and, the other and, thing. And there are plenty of people out in the world... Mm -hmm that have millions of dollars mm -hmm. and are prepared to say, I can't afford 2000 <laughs> you know? But they're prepared to pay $45,000 a semester or a year at Yale University. Yeah, it's the program, though. That See, the reason why people are programmed is because these guys, they work in perceptions, and they perceive things a certain way because they're given their perception by the, the system. And so they they do it. They you know that's why people see like the media as their friend, but the media is totally different. But they perceive it as being uh, on their side. Yeah. You know, but and that's how yeah. all of it. Is. It's nine forty-five my time. Oh yeah, I guess that's my time too. Which means it's time for me to go to bed. Yeah. All right, Glenn. Okay. All right. Goodbye.